Crystal. We're going to be talking about silhouette stamps today and we're going to make a variety of different highly colored backgrounds. So stick around and we'll see how we made all these cards. So I was inspired this month because the My Monthly Hero Kit has a really cute silhouette stamp. Um, but before I went shopping I tried to look at what I already had and I had a great silhouette stamp from Simon Says Stamp. So I got out my stamp and I Got out one piece of mixed media paper and one piece of watercolor paper. Cut each of them in fourths and I stamped and heat embossed the image eight times. Um, so I did it in clear embossing powder, I did it in cream embossing powder, I did it in black, I did it in gold. I need a lot of chances to get something that I like. Um, so the first couple of backgrounds I've got um, one of the watercolor panels and one of the mixed media panels. And I'm using really inexpensive watercolor paints to apply some color to the background here. So I took my Prang watercolors, and they're, I mean, those are cheap. They're like three bucks. Um, and I am using a foam plate as my pa paint palette. And on this right-hand panel, I just painted some red, some blue, and some purple, and I'm kind of blending those together with, uh, with water. So watercolor dries back quite a bit when it goes from wet to dry, and it will get quite a bit lighter. But in the end, I wasn't really crazy about this color combination, um, but you can always save something with more paint. So in the end, that is what I did, and I will show you that in just a second. Now, when I get to the left-hand panel, I, I use colors that um, are together on the color wheel, and so that's a little bit easier to blend, no matter which medium you're using. When you use colors that are far apart on the color wheel, it's harder to blend. So I don't know if it was me, if it was the paint, I, I just did not like this red, blue, purple transition. It did not, um, did not spark joy, that's for sure. But I'll set that aside to dry and we'll come back to it in a second. So now on this panel, I'm just going to use um, a combination of warm colors. I'm starting out with some clear water. Um, I have a little spray bottle just for convenience and I've brushed that on. And then I'm going to blend the color, and I'm starting with red at the bottom again. Really nice high contrast with the embossed stamping. And I'm just dropping really wet watercolor onto this pre-moistened paper. So it's spreading out quite nicely. It's really easy, <clears throat> easy to work with. Any kind of watercolor would work here. Um, if you have watercolor paints, that's great. If you want to use reinkers, that's great. If you want to smash an ink pad onto a norm pour surface, it, it all works. But here I'm just blending out my red and yellow and just a little bit of orange between the two. And since those colors, like I said, are close together on the color wheel, the blend is very nice. And anytime you take a water medium and you put a wet against wet, it's going to blend. And since the colors are close together and I'm putting wet against wet, it just blends really nicely. So we will check back on this one when it dries as well. So that first one, I didn't like it. I just took some blue paint out of that same watercolor palette and I'm just overpainting the entire panel with blue paint. So it does give me some nice variation in color because you can still see the red and purple underneath um, from the original uh, pass of watercolor. But I liked how it looked after I overpainted the entire thing with blue paint. Um, still very easy, um, quick watercoloring not taking a lot of time with it. I'm just quickly giving it a whole coat of blue here. Set that aside to dry. And now I'm going to move on to ink blending. So these are Distress Oxide inks, and I've just um, dripped some of the re-inker into the foam plate, which I'm picking up with a brush to blend onto my panel. And here I'm starting out with Scattered Straw, then I'm going on to Picked Raspberry, and then my purple color is uh, Dusty Concord. And so the trick to ink blending is to have a lot of ink. That's what enables it to blend on the page. And starting with a re-inker instead of starting with an ink pad, you can really get to a lot of ink in a hurry. And so even though these colors are far apart on the color wheel, it's easy to blend them together when you've got a considerable amount of ink on the page. Now I do not have a, a zillion different ink blending tools, and so I will take these brushes to the kitchen sink after I'm finished and actually wash them with detergent 
um, to get the, the oxide ink out of them so that next time if I want to use dye ink through a stencil or something, the, the brushes will not contaminate my other um, color mediums. Now I'm using Arteza brush markers, and that is my very sophisticated storage um, system there, the Ziploc bag. I really like Ziploc bags for markers because they, they help keep them from drying out if your caps are not quite tight. And so I just swatched the markers out on my um, scrap paper there a little bit to make sure that I wasn't picking something strange because the color on the cap and the base is not always indicative. And I'm just um, spreading these Arteza brush markers onto my watercolor paper with great abandon. And then I'm going to blend them out with some clear water and a paintbrush. And I'm just putting the clear water on a little foam plate. Um, and where I don't have enough color, I can go back and add more from the brush marker. Very easy to do. This, um, this medium is very forgiving, and if you are not comfortable using watercolor paints, or if you don't have watercolor paints, markers give you a lot of control because you've got that tip, and it's just like writing. So you can just put that tip where you want the color, and they're very easy to use. So here I'm just going to add a little bit more color there at the bottom. I need some contrast with my white um, heat embossing. So um, once you've got the color onto the page, that clear water makes it really easy to blend out. No effort at all to blend it. And you can put the color on pretty heavily. It doesn't, um, you don't have to start off the page and then go onto the page or anything like that. Since it's a water medium and you're using water to blend it, it's all going to flow very easily and very nicely. So that's just plain water on a um, cheap paintbrush. And I think this turned out pretty nicely. And again, using colors close together on the color wheel does make the blending a little bit easier. So now I'm going to go on from the Arteza markers and I'm going to try a different, different medium. And the next one is uh, gel crayons. Now I don't think <laughs> the gel crayons turned out great. I really enjoyed using gel crayons. Um, this is the, you know, the medium that a distress crayon would be, or um, but they come in a lot of different brands, and it just looked like a hot mess, and it was a hot mess. Um, I'm going to have to go back and save this with some watercolor paint, but I'll show it to you dry before I do that. So here are my panels once I've dried: watercolor, 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 and then we've got some ink blending some ink blending with Distress Oxide inks, and then here's the gel crayon. Yeah, that's terrible. And now the finished card. So ink blending, watercolor, 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 um, more watercolor. This was my clear heat embossing. It didn't go very well, so I did tone on tone, and there's the gel crayon. So thank you for joining me today.